are you uh, hoping to see tomorrow? Uh, you know, I, I, you're probably down by the final score, but what, what are you hoping to see in the first game? Well, there's a lot of new kids that I don't know about, you know, uh, new draft picks, and uh, I'm excited to see all those guys, actually, and, uh, you know, just a um, couple of drills here and there. I don't think you can um, make a team yet, but just more individually, what kind of skills they have, and there's a bunch of, uh, like I said, there's a bunch of kids I don't know about, so I'm excited to see them. Is there anybody that jumped out at you today that surprised you, maybe? Well, you know, I'm French-Canadian, so I'm looking at the French guys, and I can wait to see. I got a bunch. I got four, actually. I'm like, wow, that's the first time, but um, I'm excited to see everybody. There's not one guy who's just like, uh, you know, we have a bunch of, uh, like I said, new kids from this year. I know a couple of the kids from the past years, but uh, most of them are, are going to be brand new for me and my staff and, you know, the Flyers management. But uh, one guy, not really. I'm, I'm excited to see everybody. Was there, so was, was there anyone who, you know, whether it's somebody that you you coached last year or whether it's somebody you just worked with at camps that look like they've taken a big physical leap? Well, Zimula and uh, White Wiley, you know, and um, good on them. Like, that means they put the work in the summer. And uh, for me, I coached them last year, and, you know, and both of them needed to be str – they're only 22 years old, so, like, yeah, that's why – Nobody's panicking, but, you know, they, they realize that they need to put weight on, and they did. And for me, that's part of being a pro. you got to recognize your weakness and address them in the summer. It's tough to address there, uh, you know, especially weight-wise. It's tough to address that in the, in the winter. You know, the, the schedule is crazy. You don't have time to train like you, usually, like you train in the summer. And, uh, but they realized it last year, and I think Z's at 192 pounds, you know, from probably 170 two years ago. I'll credit to him. Put the work in. Same with Wiley. You had uh, Mullen Adder together today. And That's big, eh? yeah. Wow, that Adder is a big boy. Yeah. You know? yeah. I don't think he'll play tomorrow, but I'm excited to see him play Saturday. Okay. Nice. If you want a a name, that's that might be one name you can put out there. So the, the Adder's not going. To well, I got 10 D's, so some guys and um, I, you know you, you only can play 60, so you know they. They pretty much tell me who, who they want to see. So, you know, there's a picking order. I just uh, listen to my bosses, and I play who they want to see. How about the goalie tomorrow? It won't be Urson. It's going to be the other two guys. So, and um, Urson probably for Saturday. And, uh, last well, year, Saturday, yeah, sorry. Last year when you took the Phantoms job, you mentioned how your relationship with the Lane and you was very strong. Yep. You guys were in sync with systems. How has your relationship started with John Tortorella, and do you have to make some adjustments there? No, yeah, great relationship. I mean, like, great. I, great first meeting. I saw it a couple of times, but the, in our first meeting, it's like, you play a system you want to play, you do your thing, you got to win down there. I'm going to take care of my team, and that's a different philosophy, but he, he's the boss, so I'm going to do what he's telling me to do. But um, we're pretty much playing the same system, you know, and we – we believe in this, a lot of the same thing, you know, hard work, blocking shots, making, you know, doing the little things right. And he made a career doing that as a coach. And um, for me, it's, uh, you know, we won't work together, but we will kind of. He's probably going to be one of my go good mentor, even if I'm not here every day, just to see how he adjusts. And with the call up, you know, I'll, I'll pick the kid's brain when they come back to me to see what Torts is doing. I'm, I'm sure I'll be talking to Torts not too often, but once in a while. So. I'm actually very excited to work with him. Does he fire you up a little bit? I know that everyone says he's fiery. That's yeah, yeah, he is, but he's, he's pretty calm right now. I'm just excited, like, you know. I mean, oh, I'm in okay shape, but I'm not in kind of shape that uh, the guys are going to go through in next week. <laughs> I'm actually excited to see um, his training camp. Yeah. You got to see uh, Tyson Forrester first at the beginning of last season. Challenges he faced with the you know, players coming back to the AHL. What do you think that experience did for him and now coming back healthy? That's that's the biggest thing for him. Like for me, he came to me last year, he wasn't healthy. Like he had issues with his shoulder and his shoulder, you know, finally popped, not finally, but it popped out like on a innocent play. He dove, was five on three, he dove and his shoulder, that means his shoulder was ready to pop out. And I played the game long enough. If you're not healthy right from the get go, it's tough to build. But he looks like a different kid. Like, you know, you rehab a full year, you, you, you look at him physically, he's thicker, which probably that year of being here, doing the rehab, getting stronger, it helped him big time. And I watched the World Juniors this summer, he, he looked like a man, which I'm very excited. You know what? Like I told him and I tell all those kids, don't worry about me yet. 
you worry about the torts and make this seem, but if he does come to me, I'll be excited to work with him. We were talking to Cam Atkinson today about reducing the goals allowed, and he said that John will bring that two-way player type of mentality. Does that just cover the whole organization? From the top well, I believe in that too. You know, I'm, uh, trust me, I'm not John Tortorella. You know, he's been coaching for, what, 20 years? Like, you know, he's won and everything, but... That's what I believe in. Like, you know, you can talk about system all day, but it's the little things in the game that makes, and that's, um, that's a big difference between winning and losing, our winning team and losing team. You know, everybody talks about the Tampa of uh, this world. They're great, their skills and everything, but it's not why they win. They win because they do the little things right. They make the right decision with the puck at the right time. And towards, you know, he, he made a career of coaching like that. and. I'm trying to make a career as a head coach, coaching like that too. You know, I'm, I make sure those guys make uh, the right decision at the right time, and that's my job to start at the, the American League level, and hopefully when they come and play for Torts, they're going to be um, ready to play the right way. How excited are you um, about coaching the Phantoms this year with a lot of guys back from injuries, and not that you'll be 100% healthy, but a lot healthier. Yeah, healthier, and they make good moves to bring uh, – Good veterans like Brooks, who uh, you played it for Winnipeg last year, and you know again, he, I want him to focus on making the big team. But at one point, I'm going to have players like they, you know, you only can keep four lines and seven defensemen or whatever they're going to keep. So I have good players coming my way, but hopefully injury is going to be um, in the past. And I think the guys look unbelievable in great shape. I see them in the gym, the you know the big team, and even the younger guys. I think they had 40 guys here two weeks ago. I've never seen that. I've been here for 13 years. I've never seen that. So it's all credit to them. They put the work. They want to make sure nobody gets injured. What, is it going to happen? I don't think so. But at least they put uh, chance on their side by uh, training the right way this summer and getting ready for torch training camp. Do you, uh, Do you make any um, adjustments or changes the way you're running camp this year? Running camp? Well, we, we did not make adjustment. Uh, like I met with my staff last week and uh, all over the, you know, during the summer for new IDs, and we do have more skills coming our way. Like Forrester, we talked about Denoyer, kids that will bring more skills to our team down there. So um, we did co make a couple of adjustments, but if you want to sit with me at one point, I'll talk to you about my adjustment, but I don't think that's a place to do that here, but we did. Like at the end of the day, I asked my players to learn from their mistakes and you know, be better at what they do. It's the same, it started with me too. Like I made mistakes last year. I'm not ashamed of saying it. I'm not afraid of saying it. I'm a big boy, I can't take it. I, w I learned from it and I'll be a better coach and I expect my players to be better too. You mentioned uh, Dano A, you joked about the, the French Canadians. Is he French? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you gotten a, a chance to, to get to know him? I know he's someone who's kind of been around the facilities a lot over the last Yeah, I, I, like it's funny, like uh, I play with his dad all my life you know, growing up. So when I said a name, I'm like, mm, I know that name. And uh, fair enough. Uh, uh, you know, w there's not that many French Canadian in, in the hockey world, if you want. I, I wish there'd be more. But. Um, I, you know, we got to know a little bit. Like last year, he came over and had dinner at my house when he was here last summer. So uh, I tried to help him out because I know the family. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be demanding on him when he plays for me, and it's he won't, he won't have any um, easy out or anything. He knows I'm demanding. I'm, I try to be. Uh, I want those guys to connect with me. I want those guys to talk to me like a big brother. But at the end of the day, I demand a lot. I want them to work hard. I want them to take care of themselves on and off the ice. And I want them to play into my structure. And he knows that. Does he have any similarities to his father? Or to his father? His dad was a defenseman. Does and that mean just the way he well, at the game? Or? Well, he knows that he can tell when a kid grew up in hockey. Like his dad played hockey all his life. Like he's passionate about the game and he works on his skills and everything. His dad was a defenseman. He was a physical defenseman, really tough too. He was a lefty. See, I know a lot about the family, <laughs> but the kid is more skilled. But he's got that, that drive that uh, I love and every coach's love. He's he's not the biggest guy, but he plays big. So he's a kid. He's 19, 20 years old. He's gonna go. You know, he's gonna have ups and downs, but. I'm very excited to work with him and everybody else. You know, I'm, that's, that's why I took the job. I want to I wanna challenge, I want to work with young guys, and I want to um, give them the experience I had as a player, and he's one of many. The two rookie games last year against the Rangers were very physical 
home games. How, how much of that do you want to see again? Well, like I told those kids yesterday, well, the first time I met with them, I'm like, if you're a physical player, play, be a physical player. If you're a skilled player, show us your skills. You just can't, don't try to re reinvent yourself right now. You know, play the way, you know, the way that took you here. And um, sometimes you have kids that are not physical and they try to run around because they know the coach used to be that kind of player. I don't want to see that. I want them to show me and show the organization what brought them here, why they got drafted, and why they're in camp. And, you know, is it going to be physical? Who knows? I'm sure they, they have physical players. We do too. And hockey is hockey. It's not, you know, it's a different game today, you know. And uh, I'm just expecting uh, hard played games on both sides, and, and hopefully we'll win. How much does versatility help a young player? We're using Elliott as an example. World Junior, mostly mostly fourth line. Yeah. Uh, but when Ridley Gregg was injured, they moved him up. But when they were in the queue, he played every situation. Yeah. So is everybody else. Like, you know, like uh, guys that usually get drafted, they, they were uh, the big dog on their team. They were on the power play and PK. But that's their job when they do come to – uh, to be a pro, that's their job to find a chair, the right chair. You know, I'm, I hate to go back to my career, but like I, in junior, I was an offensive guy, and I, um, I came. You know, I, I went to my first St. Louis camp. I looked around; everybody was pretty good. You look at the stats. Oh boy, he led his team in scoring. You have to find. That's the biggest quality. It's you have to find the right chair for yourself to to make it to the NHL. Not only making it, but staying in the NHL as long as you can. And it's going to be um, Elliot job to figure it out it might take a little while might take a you know a couple of bad games or whatever like it might take months might take a year might take two years before you figure out what kind of chair what kind of player he's going to be uh, to make it to the nhl he's not the only one all those kids that i'm talking about like they were all great everywhere like in junior college now they come to me they have to find the right chair and I'm, that's my job to help them now it's not always easy to to hear that, okay, now you're gonna have to block shots, take a hit to make a play. You don't, you can't do that little fancy stuff that you did last year in junior. But it's my job to do that. Thank you. All right. Thank you.